everyone, and welcome to this week's Sunday's Digital Campus. It is so great to have you with us, isn't it, Nico? It's so good to be back. I won't lie, just miss being with you guys. So, um, thank you very much for having me once again. Of course, we love your energy. Um, don't you love Nico's shirt? I mean, donut come on. dropper. Come I think on. that's a. <laughs> Listen, if you're eating a donut now, I see you. <laughs> First thing in the morning is a great time to do it, actually. Exactly, exactly. Oh. We would love to acknowledge you if you are new here today. Welcome. We love to say that you are welcome to come as you are. And we are so grateful that you've stumbled upon us this morning or come to us intentionally, however it is. We'd just love to let you know what the service is going to look like for the next 45 to 50 minutes. Um, after we've um, chatted for a little bit, there'll be a time of message and a short worship song. And then we'll be going into a little bit time of extra things to tell you about after that. So it doesn't sound like a lot and it isn't. It's exciting stuff. Sure. It's fun stuff. And we'd love for you to journey with us for these next 45 to 50 minutes. Exactly, guys. We like keeping in the loop. And here's the thing. Today is Thanksgiving Sunday. And <laughs> man, oh man, listen, isn't there just a lot for us to be thankful for? Here's the thing, right? Um, I think if I look at myself, I'm thankful for my health. I'm like, you yeah. know what? I'm healthy. I'm strong. It's healthy. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, you know, okay, what are you thankful for? Is there anything that you're thankful for? I'm definitely thankful for health as well. I am not strong. Um, I'm the stay in bed longer in the morning kind of person. But I've, I was sick recently, so um, and I still have a little bit of cough left over. So I'm really grateful for the healing and the health from that side of it. So, yeah. Sure. Very thankful, very Definitely. thankful. And here's the thing, guys. Kay, you might not be physically strong, but emotionally and mentally, she's stark. Be <laughs> careful. Takes uh. one to know one. Takes one to know one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if, if you are watching and you'd love to let us know what you are thankful yeah. for, please let us know in the comments. Are you sure. thankful for family? Are you thankful for food on the table? Yeah. It doesn't have to be something big. It can be something that seems small that you are grateful for. A grateful heart and a thankful heart, um, I think, is such a beautiful thing to have before God. So share it with us. Let us know. Please do. Yeah. So we're excited today. As well, we've got Kesh. Kesh is going to be sharing with us for online service with his Thanksgiving message. And he will be right up after this clip. Hey everybody, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now today is Thanksgiving Sunday and I'd love to share with you a little bit about generosity. And today we're going to be reading from 2 Kings uh, chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. And the scripture goes like this. Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. But the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. And Elijah said to her, well, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, go outside, borrow some vessels from all your neighbors and empty the vessels and not too few. Then go inside and shut the door behind yourself and you and your sons pour into all these vessels and uh, when it is full, set it aside. So she went from him and she shut the door behind herself and her sons. And as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, uh, there is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and she told the man of God, and he said, go, sell these oils and pay for your debts, and you and your sons can live on the rest. Now, um, there's a few things that I wanted to look from this passage and we'll be breaking them down into different sections. And the first thing is the question or the idea of where does my help come from? Now hard times had fallen upon her and in her pain and uncertainty, she was in a desperate need of help. Now in the Old Testament, this crying out was ultimately directed to the Lord. It was an urgent prayer for heavenly aid. When people cried out, it was either directly to God or to God via someone that was chosen by God to lead the people or mediate on their behalf. Uh, the usual mediator in those times was the king. Now, if you were in trouble or in need, the king was the Lord's servant to give you relief. But in the case of this widow, we see that she goes to the prophet who spoke on behalf of God to the people. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Psalms 123. 
Now this next part that I would like us to look at is, he asked this question, what shall I do for you? He's basically asking, how can I help? Now Elijah knew that he was a servant of God. He knew that he was created to be light in this world, to point people towards God by helping wherever he could. He was ready to help. Elijah was caught in the middle of a difficult time in the nation. His life was in danger by the king. This chapter is in the middle of all of the other stressful stuff going on around him in his life. But he gets to put that on pause because he wants to help. He puts everything else aside because somebody else is in need and he wants to help them. With all the trouble he faced, he could have rejected the widow when she came to him in her time of need. He could have told her, go away, because he had so many of his own problems to worry about. And yet, he does not choose to brush her off. He does not treat her as if she was unimportant. And more importantly, he doesn't judge her or blame her. Without a stone to throw, he responds immediately with a heart of generosity and asks a simple question, how can I help? We don't have to wait to be inspired when the sad minor chord starts playing by the worship pastor while the pastor is speaking in a heavenly language, creating a moment. Uh, being generous should be incorporated into our daily lives. It should, we should always be ready and willing to be helpful. Elisha responds with words of re refreshment and not blame. He doesn't even turn this into a lesson uh, to learn about sin. Uh, something must be lacking in your face or you are a bad steward of what God has given you. No, Elisha's response was genuine and it was heartfelt, loving and caring. The next section he goes to, it says, your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Now this flask of oil, uh, which represented the widow's utter poverty, has become the very source of her being debt free. Uh, it became provision for living her daily life. God also shows that his greatness in her story by multiplying what she had identified as her only possession. He could have just used anything to provide for, like people or put a check in her mailbox, but he made himself personal, real to her by using the very thing she said she had. And then we see... Uh, that she is told to go outside and borrow vessels from all of her neighbors. Mm -hmm. God will always provide for us, but sometimes he asks us to step out in faith and do our part. Mm -hmm. Our obedience or disobedience doesn't change his character, but it can change our outcome. Now, if the widow had laughed at Elisha's instructions or doubted the faithfulness of God, been lazy to not do the work that she was instructed to, the story may not have had the same happy ending. And then she uh, goes to the neighbors and she asks them uh, for the vessels. Now this next step, it was a tough one. It was going to be difficult for the widow and the neighbors. To the widow, this meant humbling herself and asking the neighbors for help. There was this advert uh, that I used to watch as a kid. Uh, funny enough, it was about another kid who used to go to their neighbors and it was an advert for dishwashing soap and he was going to borrow some dishwashing soap with this little teaspoon and he gets the dishwashing soap and brings it back home and they wash all the dishes. And the idea behind this advert was that they could just use a little to go a long way. But for me, as I watched that advert growing up, the thing that stood out to me was the fact that this little child was able to go to the neighbor and actually borrow that stuff. But in the real world these days, that kind of generosity amongst neighbors, it hardly exists anymore. These days, you might not even know your neighbor's name. She could have had the door slammed in her face. Her neighbors could have been ghosting her like people do when they see one of their exes. Um, <laughs> she had to risk with God. The neighbors were also faced with a difficult choice to help or not to help. Uh, because money given away means that it's no longer yours to spend or to save. It can make you ask yourself, will I have enough if I give this away? Uh, 
Uh, what if I have to change my tires this month? What if the kids are baking this week at school or my child decides they want to study something in college that is very expensive? You know, school holidays are coming up very soon and we're going to need money for that. Um, so these are all questions that we can ask ourselves. Do we have enough for ourselves in those situations if I give what I have away? If I'm taking care of God's interests, who's going to take care of me? But it is more blessed to give than to receive. That's what it says in Acts 20 verse 35. Paul writes that God is able to bless you and provide everything that you need, that you can continue being generous. Mm -hmm. Fear of tomorrow paralyzes the generosity of today. The life of generosity is a life of trust. Now, maybe you feel like when God looks at you, he runs in the opposite direction because you're way too much of a burden. But God is still with you when you feel like you are being emptied out. Don't be obsessed uh, with getting more material things. Be relaxed with what you have since God has assured us, I'll never let you down. Never walk off and leave you. We can boldly quote, God is there ready to help. Hebrews 13, 5, verse 6. So don't worry uh, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 to 33. Now, God will never leave or forsake you. Trust he will sustain you. Use your emptying as an opportunity to grow closer to God for who he is and not because of what he gives. We sense his presence more closely when we have been emptied. And uh, this is a great opportunity for us to draw closer to him. He is with you and he will never leave and forsake you. God is enough. Now the widow has uh, another instruction which is shut the door behind yourself and your sons and then she gets to doing what she's told to do. Uh, when God is at work in your life, we should not be showing off and flaunting the miracle. Testify if you feel that's what God is leading you to do. But remember the heart of testimony is not to brag but to encourage. This act teaches us about humility when it comes to generosity. There are plenty of times where Jesus publicly performs miracles, but here we see that this generous act unfolding was done privately. Now, uh, our generosity means giving people a dignified experience when it comes to love and care and generosity. This means that we don't get to go and just take pictures to post on social media to brag about our own goodness. We are called to give a dignified experience to those in need. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that your giving may be in secret, then your father who sees everything, uh, what is done in secret, will reward you. Matthew 6 verse 3. Being generous is using your time, talent, and treasure. And tomorrow is not promised, by the way. So let's make good use of the time that God has given to us by giving the time that we have when we can and making the sacrifices that we need to in order that we can carry out the work God has given us to the glory of his name. I have set an example uh, that you should do as I have done for you, Jesus says. And what are some of the things that he has done? Well, he led by serving. He loved by serving. Now Jesus himself, he did a miracle that was very similar to this. Oil, aside from being used for cooking, was also symbolized as purification and was used for anointing. The oil was poured out into other vessels to be sold and pay for the debt of the widow. But in the miracle that Jesus performed, his blood was poured out so that we could be filled with his spirit and the wages of our sins would be paid. We love because he first loved. We forgive because he forgave us. We generously give because he 
has generously given to us. Revelation 3.20, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. I stand at the door and knock. This is God's generous invitation. It is an invitation to friendship. We will sit together and eat together. Jesus is interested in friendship and fellowship with those that have lost their way. The lonely, the bored, the depressed, those that are consumed with envy, those that are considered to be sinners, the brokenhearted, the happy and the content people, even the poor and the rich. This is an invitation to everyone. He is generous and he invites you into relationship with him. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. He has invited you. So now friends, I leave you with a challenge. Who will you invite to the table?
windows let the light in open up the windows let the light in let the light in open up the windows let the light in open up the windows let the light in open up the windows let the light in let the light in What an awesome worship oh, song, hey? That was good, that was So good. stoked. And like we said last week, this was one of the first songs for our new digital yeah. worship set that we recorded. And as you can see, it is amazing. It is a collaborative project between our media team and our worship team, and of course, our amazing digital campus. Uh, oh. So we are so stoked to be able to share that first video with you guys today. What a great time of worship. And thank you, Kesh, for such a great message as well. Oh, thank you very much. And like, you know, you speak of this worship element and um, really the time of giving that we're about to go into is an act of worship. You totally. know, um, it's we, we call it an act of worship because we get to encounter God mm. through our generosity, yeah. right? Through our giving, we get to go, hey, listen, you know, this is another act of worship. It's how we get to encounter God, see God work. So um, especially, you know, we in a, in a Thanksgiving Sunday, you yeah. know, we really get to appreciate mm. um, all that God's done for us. So we're going to go into a time of giving. And if, if you've given this time, we'd like to just say, hey, listen, guys, it's going to be an element that pops up on screen. Uh, feel free to participate. And maybe it's your first time. Mm. Um, please don't feel pressured. You know, don't feel like, hey, listen, well, you know, I'm excluded out of this because we understand it's your first time. But um, for those that you give, this is your time where you'll really be able to show your generosity. Mm. Thank you so much as well, hey, That's really great. And as you have heard before, if you've been here, and if you haven't, we love to say that we are more than Sundays here at Grace. It's not just about attending and being a part of a Sunday community, it's a full week community. Yeah. It is a seven day thing. And part of that with our digital campus is on a Thursday, we have 10 with Tom that goes out at 6 p.m. in the evening on YouTube and on Facebook. And it's basically just the time where we explore faith mm. 10 minutes at a time. This week, we're gonna have Kesh with us, so that's gonna be Come really on. special. So yes. you, you don't wanna miss out on that yeah for sure definitely and guys here's the thing right maybe it's your first time maybe you've been watching you know time and time week in week out but you've never subscribed mm. hey subscribe right hit the little bell notification mm -hmm. what that does it reminds you every time we post something you get a notification that says hey listen we're back on it so you, you're reminded by all the time so, so helpful it is no literally and I, like, some people don't know what it is i never knew what it was <laughs> but now i know and now you know so um you share work. the message Work culture, that's the real thing, right? So let's be woke. Um, exactly, exactly. <laughs> if you want to be hip and cool like Nico, then be woke. It's great. Take some tips, guys. Um, exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> maybe also, maybe this message also stood out to you. Yeah. Or you think, hey, listen. I need this person to listen to it. Guys, here's the thing. It's a digital era. You can literally mm. take that link, copy it, share, press the share button, yeah. get it out there. You know, mm. it's not, it doesn't take that much. Exactly. You know? It's never been easier than yeah. it is right now. Come on. Yeah, We're totally. so fortunate. I'm not going to lie. We are. We really are. We're so fortunate for having you with us today. I am thankful Stop to have it. Nico here today. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. Thank right. you so much, hey, Nico. Thank you very much. It's always such a joy just to really be here with you. And especially you guys. I really enjoy it. So um, whenever I can, I'm here mm. um, with our 
without a doubt. So exactly. had such a great time and thanks for having me. Thanks for welcoming me with mm, open arms. Definitely. I know some of you guys are like hugging me right now. Totally hugging through the screen. <laughs> totally hugging through the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Shame, thank you so much. And thank you again, like Nico says, for watching. Uh, we will like to see you next week, Thursday, for 10 with Tom. Sure. Otherwise, we'll see you next week, Sunday. Bye, everyone. Cheers, guys.